What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you what I think is the best astrophotography setup that you can get in 2025 price tag included. The featured object tonight will, will be Messier 106, a grand design spiral galaxy and I can't wait to show you guys how much that this tiny little telescope that I just bought can really pack a punch against these huge galaxies. I'll be going over my new setup that I'll be using for probably the next few years and we'll be showcasing a lot of the features that really sets this photography setup set up far better than some others if you're on a budget. My name is Tanner from AstroTan, let's hit it. Well, soon I will be ditching this backyard and going to a new one called Butler University. Yeah, that's a little crazy if you ask me. And sucks for myself because I can't bring my humongous 80 millimeter refractor and my Ioptrine GEM28 anymore because, well, it's a lot of things to carry around. And if you're a college student watching this video, I'm sure you know better than I that putting a lot of things in a dorm room is really not the best idea. You wanna make sure you minimize a lot of the things that you bring. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that my setup will fit in a small little dorm with Ryan's setup as well. So because of this, I've decided to build a new astrophotography rig that I have been building for quite some time now. And not only is this a great travel and budget astrophotography rig, but it's also great for college and keeping a setup there while keeping other things at home. Sure, it might not be good for galaxies, but we're gonna put that to the test tonight because this telescope has better optics than my other refractor. So let's do a rundown of what the setup includes. Now, before we dive into this setup, you're probably wondering, how much is a budget astrophotography setup? Well, it kind of all comes down to you. If you have a small DSLR and a star tracker, this will be a great option for you to get your feet into astrophotography without blowing the bank on getting a more permanent setup. Very travel astrophotographer loves taking pictures of the Milky Way and getting those wide field shots, then maybe this is the way to go. Though nothing is cheap in astrophotography, it still is pretty cheap compared to a lot of the things that you can get. Now, my setup with everything included before I deep dive into things is roughly about $2,400. And I promise guys, that is a budget astrophotography setup for taking some deep sky pictures. When you take a look at the market of mounts, telescopes, and cameras, you'll really find that this is a pretty cheap astrophotography rig for everything all in one. Sometimes you'll see telescopes that price for even higher than my whole setup combined. And that's if you want some super quality optics like a triplet APO telescope. Or if you want a big Newtonian setup to really deep dive into the galaxies and nebulae that you see in the night sky, then maybe that's where you want to push your money toward. But if you're a traveling astrophotographer or just want something easy to carry outside of your house up and down the stairs like I do right here, yeah, it's not fun. It wasn't fun with my other setup, but here we are. You might want to invest yourself in a light and portable star tracker. And this gets me to my first point. The star tracker of choice for my budget astrophotography rig was the Skywatcher Star Venture GTI. And if you want to learn more about this mount, I post a review on my YouTube channel, link in the description. The Skywatcher Star Venture GTI is the upgraded version of the Star Venture 2i, if that's what you want to call it. The Star Venture GTI has a payload capacity of 11 pounds and comes with two counterweights to give you more ease of use. It also has go-to functionality, which means that you can point your telescope anywhere where you want in the sky and it will find it for you. It will also center and track the object for you as a typical star tracker should. The reason this mount draws so much astrophotographers is because of its poor portability in mind. It is literally a star tracker built in with go-to functionality and also the availability for computer control, which is what I use it for, for our deep sky astrophotography. This means that it can run an entire rig all by itself while controlling it from your computer. It will communicate with all of your astrophotography apps and software to make sure that you get the accuracy tracking that you need. It tracks at just about under one arc second average and some nights I've also got even to 0.3 arc seconds and that is some precise tracking if you ask me. But the reliability of the tracking all depends on the telescope and the gear you have on top. And this mount was roughly $700 US with the tripod included. But let's talk about what we have on the top of the setup so we can ensure that this mount works to its full potential. Oh yeah, this is where the fun begins. Sorry, I just saw Revenge of the Sith in theaters yesterday. <laughs> Peak experience. I knew that my 80 millimeter refractor would not be large enough to fit into a camera bag. And like I told you, I wanna be able to carry this thing in and out 
from campus or up and down the stairs. I wanna make sure that this fits into a small lightweight travel bag. That way I can make one trip down from my dorm, right? And this is where buying this telescope came in mind. I wanted to make sure that it was small enough to do all these things. The telescope has a focal length of 360 millimeters at F6. So this thing is pretty moderately fast. It also has FPL 53 glass if you're interested in the glass types. My other telescope has FPL 51, so it is an upgraded version of glass quality for this telescope. I have noticed the increased contrast and detail even with a smaller telescope zoomed in on galaxies. Isn't that crazy? It features a dual speed focuser for getting precise focus and it also comes with an adjustable field flattener and a guide scope to make sure you have everything you need to get this rig up and running. I bought this all with my lovely work salary for a total of $588 and if you ask me that is a big deal. Take for example the William Optics Red Cat 51 which retails for nearly almost twice the price of that for a smaller or slightly larger telescope. So this Apertura doublet refractor, really great budget refractor telescope if you ask me. Of course, you could never go wrong with the Player One Artemis C Pro, the camera that has really performed amazingly throughout the past couple years since I've got it. I got it in 2023 and it is an IMX 294 sensor, which is moderately wide and has a decent resolution to be able to capture a lot of nebulae and galaxies in great detail while also not sacrificing that frame limit. This means that you can still capture a lot of space in one picture regardless if you have a small or big telescope. It has a big enough sensor to be able to kind of be the best of both worlds. That camera retailed for about $800 US and it is a huge bang for your buck considering that the ASI 294 MC Pro from ZWO retails for a little bit more than that. And then last but not least on top of the setup I have the trusty old ZWO ASI 120 MC, the camera that has been with me since the dawn of time. This thing has been around since forever and I've used it on planets, nebulae, galaxies, you name it. And now it acts as my main primary guide camera. And that retailed for about $100 when I got it. It's discontinued now, but there are better guide cameras out there. So maybe I'll get my hands on one soon. To run this entire astrophotography setup, I have my $200 Melee Mini PC and this thing Boy, has it been a lifesaver and a game changer for my whole astrophotography rig. It features four USB ports here to connect all of my equipment and I also have adapters in case I need to connect anything else, which I really don't. It controls my dew heater, my camera, my camera fan, and also the mount itself and the guide camera. So it does literally everything and it runs Nina and it performs amazingly. So if you guys don't have a mini PC for your astrophotography setup, make sure you guys go out and grab one. They're cheap and they're reliable, trust me. Finally, on the bottom of powering this whole thing, I have something that I spent quite a bit of money on but I don't consider this part of the astrophotography rig. This is the Anchor Solix power station and this thing was, was a necessary need for in college. And this is where the portable power station situation comes in you want a big power station to control your setup for multiple nights in a row and me and Ryan are going to be using the same power station together to run both of our rigs check out his channel it features numerous outlets for me to charge my phone and power my whole entire astrophotography setup so I can just relax and sit out there as long as I want and that concludes my astrophotography setup that I consider one of the best and here's a little overview of why though I know some might disagree with what I think about this being the most budget and amazing astrophotography setup that you can buy. Here are a few things to take into consideration. Take into consideration how much you want to spend. Most average astrophotography setups can range up to $5,000 depending on what the type of things you want to capture are. If you want a nice lightweight refractor and want to travel, then make sure you buy an Aperture 60 millimeter refractor or something along those lines. You want to make sure you have enough focal length to get those big galaxies like Andromeda and Triangulum while also capturing amazing details in nebula regions like the Eagle Nebula or the Cygnus Wall. With this telescope being priced where it is, I think it's one of the best budget refractors out there on the market and it is great to get your astrophotography rig going. Paired with the guide scope that comes with it and the field flattener, you really can't go wrong for the price of this all in one. Then you have the Artemis C Pro, which yes, it is a rather expensive astro camera. You can also downsize to, let's say for example, an ASI 585 MC Pro, which they have those and are cheaper. They feature a smaller camera sensor, but they still have that built-in cooling fan which is really important. It's kind of like an air conditioner for cameras. Paired with a cheap guide scope you really have all the tools that you need for a nice lightweight 
budget setup. You have the budget-friendly Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI, which I think is a great pull if you want to have an inexpensive astrophotography setup. That'll get you some amazing results. And powering it all with a Melee Mini PC makes it really easy to not have to lug a bin and chair outside, unless that's what you're cool with, because I did it for a while too. And then taking a little power station with you to power this thing for a couple hours is a brilliant idea. And this is why I think this is one of the best setups that you can get on the market with ease of use, able to travel with it, and get some amazing shots all taken into account. So if you guys wanna check out any of this gear, make sure you check out my links in the description. Now it's time to go ahead and get ready to image. Messier 106 is a grand design spiral galaxy located 24 million light years away from us right here in this backyard in the constellation of Canes Venetici. It's moderately big and it's moderately bright and it is a great target to kick off your galaxy season in the spring. Now I know this is the end of April, roughly May that we're sitting here and making this video. So I have kind of a time crunch because man, I'm getting excited for taking those summer shots with this telescope. Nevertheless, this will be a great optical test of the telescope that I have now since it's an FPL 53 design with doublets in there. It should really tell me how much of a difference the contrast and detail is compared to my other SV Boney telescope, which still is good, but we will see how things are compared to each other tonight. Testing this full rig has me very excited because this will give me a rough idea of the shots that I'll be taking away from home and back here alike. Let's kick things off and let's head over and get imaging. Mm -hmm. 